Hi, I'm Brigham Larson with Brigham Larson Kennels in Orem, Utah. And uh, this is the first of a uh, weekly live series that we're going to be doing. I actually have um, a shop here in Orem where every Wednesday uh, I get my crew together and we um, talk pianos. Um, nobody, uh, except, except one guy actually, nobody in, in, my, in my crew came to the piano industry with with a whole lot of experience, and so for the last, well, it's been it's been a, uh, several years now um, that I've been getting everybody together and just doing training. It all it's it's really frankly necessity based, but as these guys get get more and more training, uh, we do we do higher and higher level stuff, and and it's it's hit and miss. It's all sorts of different. Uh, subjects that we talk about based on what our needs happen to be that week. Um, so today is January, uh, is it the 7th, 6th? I think it's the 7th. Today is January 7th, 2015, and it's it's the first. So what we decided to do is, is um, stream live. It's uh, 6 a.m. Mountain Time every Wednesday morning. <coughs> So for technicians across the country, if you're interested in, in uh, tuning in and checking out what we happen to be talking about, it's totally shooting from the hip. There's no, there's no prepared um, script or anything. It's not like a, a class that you might see at the national convention or something like that. It's, it's frankly, um, I've got some ideas of things that, you know, I, I need to accomplish in the shop that, uh, that, you know, uh, give uh, the foundation for what I want to talk about any given week, but, but there's nothing that's necessarily um, written out, like I said. So, so if you are a uh, piano technician or a piano hobbyist just interested in, in <coughs> pianos like, um, like many people that, that I know, then uh, hopefully you'll join us and, and, and uh, uh, embark on a lifelong learning adventure, which is how, how I see my uh, occupation. And I should mention, by the way, the guy that, the guy that I see as kind of my mentor is he's almost 65 years old and he continues to learn. I, I see him every year at, uh, at the national conventions and he's, he's excited like a, like a little boy coming out of, coming out of the, the classes. Um, so he's been doing it for, what, 40 years, something like that, more than 40 years, and still learning. And that's, and that's fully what I expect uh, out, of, out of these classes that, that I'll, I'll continue to learn um, through, these, through these weekly, this weekly web series, and, uh, and that all of, all of my guys here, that they'll learn, be able to, be able to service the panels that are here in the shop, and, and hopefully it'll be a resource to technicians nationwide, even, even worldwide. I don't know. We'll see. So uh, we thought as the appropriate um, beginning project, this is a piano that I've had for about a year or so. We've just been so swamped um, and, and haven't really had the, the uh, reason to start on this. This is a, a 1902 Steinway A. I thought this would be the appropriate excuse to get started on it. Um, we're, I, I don't think that it would be practical to, to just focus on this, on this Steinway um, every week that we do, that we do this class. Um, there's obviously parts that have to be ordered that are going to take more than a week to get here, for example, or, or things that are going to take more than a week. So we'll, we'll start here today and then next week, who knows, it'll, it'll probably be back to be back to need base, whatever whatever we happen to need in the shop, and then we'll get we'll come back periodically to the Steinway as as needed. So um, when I start a big rebuild like this, um, of course the the first thing is to uh, of course analyze and and actually a, a, a piano that Don's working on right now is a is a full. Um, is a full rebuild. It's a it's an upright piano, piano from about the same era, more or less, and it's a it's a piano that uh, that is sentimental to the to the uh, customer, and so 
it's it's just one that that she wants restored for kind of family um, heritage sort of purposes. That's that's a lot of the work that that we do, and I know that a lot of technicians do uh, nationwide. Um, sentiment really drives a lot of what we do. So uh, Steinway, of course. Um, has a uh, fantastic reputation, a lot of innovations in the in the industry. This this particular uh, Steinway, it, I I'm pretty sure this is this is very just uh, the first time I actually looked at it in earnest was last night. Um, I bought it about a year ago, and frankly didn't didn't look over it terribly closely until until last night. And even then, that was only just a few minutes. So. So I'm just kind of uh, exploring this here with the web series and, and with technicians here for the first time. So um, it looks to me right off that uh, I, I did look up the year, and 107,000 is, uh, I believe, 1902. And a lot of what I'm seeing doesn't look um doesn't look original i think this piano has been redone and i don't think it was terribly well uh i don't know maybe maybe it was okay um hard to say some some of the some of the clues that i'm going by are one it was it was refinished but it was it was kind of a an amateurish Refinishing job, so we'll for sure do that, and we'll we'll redo it right. Um, it it does have some missing parts. The guy that I bought from had already um, found the, the lid prop. It's it's altogether missing the uh, the music desk. I believe was the music desk wasn't over there, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's altogether missing. So I'm gonna have to figure out something for that. I know there are there are part suppliers that that. That can that can do that sort of thing. Um, so the the finish, like I'm like I was talking about, it looks like like somebody almost I don't know spray painted it. Would you say, Mike? Is that like a, like a <coughs> yeah. spray paint or something? Yeah, over <laughs> yeah, and then there's a lot of overspray, some white something. I don't know what that's about. What's that? Yeah, it looks like a Lacquer and paint in one spray. Or Lacquer and paint in one. Yeah. So, so of course we'll redo that in a in a polyester. Um, also, this this right here. Um, I'm wondering if the uh, if the plate was repainted at one point, but they put a piece of tape over the serial number to preserve that, and then. And then repainted the whole plate. Um, so that's a that's another clue that this piano has been redone. Also, um, the well, the keys, the the keys. Don is our resident key expert. Of course, those ivories are in pitiful shape, and the ivory ivory hasn't been widely used um, for decades because of. Uh, I believe it was 1973, 1972, something like that, that uh, there was a ban on, on use of ivory. Um, I'm not sure what we'll do about the soundboard. I guess it depends on, I got out this, this gauge here. This gauge measures, measures down wearing. The idea, the idea is that it's at zero when it's at when it's pretty, yeah. So if it's straight up and down. It's more or less at zero, which is right there. Um, so we'll measure down bearing on the on the strings over here. See how much see how much crown that that uh, that soundboard still has. The bridges. Um, I, I looked over them briefly last night. And uh, 
I don't even see any cracking. So probably, do you see any cracking over there? Any hairline cracks or anything in the base bridge? I can't see anything right up here. Okay. This looks pretty good. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good sign. So bridges are in in good shape. We'll at least use the bridge. We might we might use the sound the original soundboard, or we might replace it. Not sure yet. Uh, we'll definitely re refinish the plate, which of course we've got to take a lot of measurements to do that. We'll we'll and and if we're going to the extent of taking the plate out, of course, it goes without saying, we'll replace the strings, replace the pins, and, and also the pin block. Um, but that's down the road, of course, the dampers. The action, I haven't taken the action out at all, even when I when I first bought the piano, I never saw. Let's look at that action together for the first time. I'm sure the I'm sure the back action will need um, will need to be replaced. And by the way, this is a this is a whole um, <coughs> teardown sheet that I have that, that we'll talk about here in a few minutes. I'd say those hammers uh, are hammered. Are hammered. <laughs> <laughs> are those cracks in that. It's like all the way down. Those. Uh, it's had some use. It's had some use. That is completely flat. Um, I didn't have any doubt that we'd be replacing the hammers anyway, given given all the other work that we we're going to be doing. But this only triple confirms that. Someone like to play that. What's well, that? Someone really to like to right play there. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, the back checks. The back checks are going to need to be replaced. Those are like that is instantly obvious. The whippings here. Um, I don't know. At first glance, they look like they could be reused. Um, you know, just with some new felt and uh, maybe some repinning. We'll take those, take all those whippings apart and uh, check them, check them one by one. See how you know if if my first uh, impression continues to be favorable of the whippings. You know, maybe just some repinning and some refelting in the in the whippings would would suffice. I don't know. We'll definitely. Definitely clean, clean everything very thoroughly. Um, we'll soda blast on on a big project like this. What's that, Aaron? I was going to say, do you want to put the hammer down? Oh, in a minute. We'll definitely soda blast the the key sticks and the and the key frame underneath here. That's a that's a tip that I picked up from. From a local technician here named Ken, Ken Foster, great guy, good technician. Um, just to just to clean them up, it shoots baking soda. Um, of course, replacing will replace all of the uh, all of the punchings and these all of these. Uh, let off belts, I'm sure. They're indented. So we'll replace those for, for more precision of um, regulation. The uh, flanges, 
I think we'll, we'll replace the flanges and the knuckles, hammer shanks and flanges. Replace all of those. And then it goes without saying, all of the felt, we'll redo that. Um, the leather and the trap work. Um, I don't know what we'll do about all of the all of the hardware. I think I think this hardware was it was all originally nickel. I don't think that's that was changed. Nickel down there. We'll we'll probably replay it all. S send it to a guy in uh, Salt Lake who uh, who, re who electroplates. I, I send him a lot of stuff. And he does all my electroplating, and it comes back looking beautiful. Actually, that's a that piano over there. Um, that's all original hardware. It's not all on yet, but you can see like the hinges and the casters down there. I had them doing nickel. I kind of change back and forth between nickel and um, brass depending on my mood, I guess. What, <coughs> what I think is going to look good for the given piano. Um, what else am I missing? Either well, a graphs. I don't know. A local, local, another local technician named Jim Busby um, <coughs> taught me about uh, about refurbishing a graphs using putting a little uh, Q-tip. Cutting Q-tips in half, putting the Q-tip in a Dremel, and then dipping the <coughs> dipping the Q-tip in uh, Brasso, and then with the Dremel going, essentially reaming out every A graph hole um, to kind of polish the inside. I think the idea being that over the decades, that if you that hole in the A graph, if you were to enlarge it. Um, you know, started out with a nice smooth hole, giving you a good termination point here for the string. Um, it, over the decades, the, the the bearing of the string against the top of the of the A graph hole eventually indented indents the, the A graph, which uh, which causes a problem with the termination point is not so precise anymore. So the thinking is, uh, and I've seen I've seen technicians you know get on their little was it called a jeweler's? Is it called a, a loop? Yeah, a loop. Um, and kind of, you know, as they examine the hole of the microscope, yeah, that. right? As they're examining, you know, to make sure that you've got a perfect A graph. Of course, a full set of A graphs cost is is uh, right around a hundred bucks, something like that. So we might just get a new set of A graphs. There can be there can be issues um, with the threading. Um, of the of the A graph, so sometimes sometimes you you have to you have to refurbish the old A graphs, but I don't know that that'll be a decision that we'll make down the road. Uh, okay, of course keys and bushings. We'll redo all of the all of these keys, make them make them nice and beautiful, brand new brand new key tops. With a, the ideal is to be able to put a straight edge right across, right across here, and just have a nice, beautiful straight line, and all of those angles be uh, 90 degrees at the at the sharp. And then these sharps, I don't know. Um, sharps. I don't see any major gouges. They definitely need to be finished. They're worn away. I kind of like the idea, if possible, of using the original sharps. But again, that'll be maybe what we'll do is we'll experiment with with one or two sharps and see if we can get rid of you know any of the little um, the little little cracking or gouges. And, and if it works, great. We'll we'll you know, do the other, we'll do all 36. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just replace them. 
with new sharps. Um, damper heads, we'll refinish the damper heads. Mike, you up for that? Sure. Refinishing those damper heads. Rebush that, uh, that damper guide rail. Of course, we'll at least refinish the soundboard if we don't replace it all together. Um, and we'll put a, on the plate, put an automotive coat. Um, we'll repaint it, uh, refinish the plate, and then put a, an automotive clear coat, something that's going to be really tough on the, on the plate. It'll yeah, protect it. So uh, that's, that's the, initial, the initial analysis of this piano. So now... Um, You're live on Facebook. What we'll do... So this uh, here here's a brief um, synopsis of this teardown sheet that uh, that we'll we'll get to work on, and the next time we um, do this web series on uh, on this piano, we should have this all um, all filled out and ready for the next some of the next steps. There's a, I mean by the way there's endless there's an endless web series nearly on this on this one piano. <laughs> this is a lot of work, but uh, we'll get it done. So here's the synopsis on the teardown sheet. Um, we're going to measure, of course, all of the uh, all of the strings. We're, we've got a micrometer that measures, you know, of course, the t to ten thousandths of an inch. It's just more accurate than using the calipers. We'll measure all of the strings, and I have that. I have that right here, string measurement, size up to up to 88. It starts at 20, but really we need to start it on this particular panel. I don't know what is that string, I don't know, uh, 28 or, or so, something like that. And then these others, these other strings will probably just have uh, duplicated. Uh, there is a guy um, that a lot of technicians are aware of, a guy out of... Uh, Tennessee, who rescales things. I don't know. I don't know how much. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people see it as sacrilegious to rescale a sacred Steinway. Um, I say that a little bit tongue in cheek, but uh, um, I don't know. That's also a decision that we'll make down the road. Um, I've, I've had a lot of strings just duplicated. It's it's fairly inexpensive to just do it that way, to uh, um, just take them off one by one, put them on a, uh, you did that, put them on a on piano wire, write an order, send them in, and they come back duplicated, and, and, they, uh, and they sound really good. I've had good luck with that. So I don't know, I'll, I'll mention that, talk, talk to, uh, Talk to a few technicians, get their get their opinion on what to do about those strings, and then similar with the uh, with the treble strings, um, I got a uh, scaling formula from a technician named uh, Carl Thiel. That was probably 15 years ago that he gave me this uh, formula for scaling for rescaling um, the uh, strings. Basically, it takes into account tension takes into account um, length of your speaking length, and, uh, and then it spits back mass, the, the mass that you want, which is, of course, the, the, um, the diameter of the string. So I don't know if we'll rescale this again. You know, a lot of people would see that as sacrilegious to rescale a Steinway, but I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what we'll do? But but in any case, we will have a record of what was here. And whether these strings are original or not, I'm not sure. <laughs> so that's that's another thing to take into account. I guess if, if the plate was refinished, then then that would uh, stand to reason that those strings were were replaced. But uh, they do look they do look really old. So I'm not sure. Maybe some more investigation will reveal that. Uh, moving on, um, bearing. I have I have strung and unstrung. So 
we'll take bearing measurements, which, which by the way, of course, the, the strings, while they look totally parallel to the uh, um, soundboard, what they're actually doing is they go up to the bridge where they go across the bridge and then down to the plate where they go around hitch pin. The idea being that um, that while the while the soundboard has a has a crown, the soundboard is kind of kind of bowed up like a like a dome shape almost. That uh, that conversely you've got the you've got the strings that are bearing down on the soundboard via the bridge, and so they're so they're putting tension on each other. I once came across at, uh, at a piano store that I worked for early on in my career. Um, really cool. Um, uh, demonstration of what of what happens when you put wood under under tension. It, it's a piece of soundboard material, a square rectangle, like about that big, with handles on either side, uh, and and a tuning fork glued to the soundboard right in the middle. So you hit the you hit the um, tuning fork with a little mallet, and you can hear the the tone resonating in the soundboard that it's glued to. But then as you Grab the handles and kind of bend it, putting the putting the um, soundboard material under, I guess, tension and compression depending on the side of the soundboard you're talking about. That sound of the tuning fork just comes alive like it blossoms. And then as you keep pushing and you push too hard, you kill the sound. So there's kind of a sweet spot where uh, where that wood really really comes alive. So that's that's part of what we'll we'll determine. Um, on the soundboard, we'll check for crown. We'll pull a string on the underside of the soundboard to see how much see how much crown is left. I've got some carpet thread. It's a thick thread that will go down under under there, and we'll we'll pull it along um, parallel to the ribs that are that are underneath there, and see uh, you know if there's if there's space. If if we've got if we've got it against against one side of the soundboard over here, against the other side of the soundboard over here. This is, of course, underneath the, underneath the piano, and there's a little bit of space in between in the, in the, the string and the soundboard in the middle, then that means that there's some, that there's some crown. If the carpet thread pulls across and it's totally flat against the uh, soundboard, then that means that the crown is lost, which, which happens. Um, oh, okay, all of that to talk about bearing. So, so like, as I, as I showed you here, this, this in theory anyway is a, is a flat surface. And so, you know, if I have that straight up and down, that needle is at zero, meaning, meaning that this surface, that, all, that that's a straight line, basically. Whereas if you put it here, let's see what happens. It can be a little bit tricky to get it right on the um, right on the string. And it looks like there's a little bit of bearing. What is that about? Seven or eight thousandths of an inch. So there's a little bit of bearing there. Um, we'll we'll take measurements. We'll take all of those measurements um, later on. I have strung and unstrung. So of course, um, it's a little bit tricky to do unstrung. So you've got to use that carpet thread and, and it takes two people, someone to pull that tight or at least, at least to remove all of the strings so that the tension is off, which, which brings the, or in theory anyway, should bring the soundboard up a little bit because it takes all of that tension all that force pushing down on the soundboard takes that off. So maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe we're going to leave the leave just the extremes of each section on, so we can more easily measure the down bearing when that tension is off. And we've got the uh, the old tuning pin diameter and old tuning pin length. And we take all those out. And then of course marking all the all the tied strings. This one here, I believe. Might be the only legitimately tied. There are some more tied strings here, but those are repairs that someone did. So those are 
I guess what I'm calling illegitimately tied strings. They're supposed to go around the hitch pin as opposed to being tied like that. Why are they doing that? As opposed to whatever they're doing. Oh, yeah. I guess so. I just didn't want to go up to the truck or whatever. Although Ammon's giving me, Ammon's giving me, or, or uh, Gavin's giving me a new perspective on, on that. He was a technician in in uh, New York City, and so it wasn't practical to have a truck. Oh, yeah. So it was really whatever he could carry on his back. Is uh, he he would basically take the subway going from going from customer to customer, and so. Um, the big backpack. <laughs> so yeah, he had, a, he had a big backpack, and uh, he didn't have the luxury of you know I've got in my truck I've got like eight cases, um, one of strings, one you know I've got everything I've basically got a piano supply house in right. my truck I've got that luxury. Of course, Gavin didn't have that luxury in New York City, so you know you get stuff like that I guess, and you don't have a whole selection of strings. So we've got tied strings. We've got shared hitch pins. That's um, that's maybe not quite worded correctly. What I mean by that is, is when you've got strings that uh, go around two hitch pins rather than just one hitch pin, which I don't believe there are any on this. Don, maybe were there some on the piano that you're working no, on? There were none. Okay. Sometimes what you see is. Is the is the string will go rather than around just one hitch pin, it'll go around this hitch pin and then it'll go up to its neighbor. And so one string will use two hitch pins. Sometimes you see that. Then felt configuration and map. Um, I just you know before I before I do a teardown, I want to get lots of pictures. You know, take take lots of photos of of everything so we get everything put back together. The way it was, um, but at the same time, on map, what I, what I like to do is draw a picture. I'll, I'll basically draw a picture of the entire um, plate, and uh, and then draw out. You know, I'll put things like like these little felt circles, draw or or just um, make notes here on felt configuration. Doesn't look like there's felt through through there. I don't know that that is a good thing or not. That might be too open for my taste. There is felt up there on the higher um, or or lower, I guess, um, through the through the non-speaking lengths of the of the bass strings and the lower tenor, but uh, no no cloth that's that's woven through the through this, I might I might add some later. Maybe add it to it one time. Yeah, it may have. So that's that's what um, I like to get on the just kind of the what what I call what I'm calling the belly on the piano. And then on the action, the notes that I like to take would be. For example, the height off the key bed that the keys are, I'll, I'll use a micrometer, and and I'll take I'll take a measurement. And and by the way, here I have notes. That's a good idea, just to just to remind yourself of where you're taking that measurement from. Because if you take the measurement here, you're going to get a completely different measurement than if you take it right at the front. So what I'll what I'll probably write. Is so so just just to get the old height because we're going to be changing everything and you know it would be helpful to know what our old measurement was even if we're going to change it in the future it'd be good to know what the baseline is so we'll take measurements maybe I'll write in my notes note number eighty eight is you know whatever the whatever that distance happens to be off the key bed and of course the uh, um, the calipers, of course, have three measurements. You've got the inside diameter, outside diameter, and depth, which is that long one that comes up, stick that comes out the bottom. So I use the depth for, for the um, high off key bed. 
So a key frame, I'm going to get the balance rail pin diameter, and this, this just comes in handy for uh, rebushing to know what calls to use. Balance rail, pin diameter, front rail, pin diameter. I'm going to get the back rail cloth thickness. And then any notes that I might have there, the whippings. Um, so we've got uh, some notes on the whippings, including the whipping flange to hammer flange distance, which uh, if we're if we're going to be messing with um, the uh, the the action, you know, if we're taking everything everything apart, we've got the we've got this this point here. That pivot point where the where the whipping um, uh, is up to the up to the uh, hammer flange pin, um, just so that we get that put back in the right spot. The other the other one that I don't have here is the uh, is the distance from the hammer flange pin down to where the whipping cushion. Comes in contact with the with the uh, capstan. That's an important important one that that designers use for the geometry. Hmm. Then jack springs. Um, of course, that that's more for for uprights. Let's see, butts. That's also for uprights, shanks, and flanges. Um, I just have notes here. There's that's really just a subjective thing. So notes on on that. And so let's look at these. Let's look at these uh, knuckles. There are ways to refurbish these knuckles, including a pulling a piece of thread through there. It kind of bolsters the knuckle. Again, I don't think we'll do that though here. Um, given the level of uh, rebuilding that I intend to do on this piano, um, bolstering knuckles to me, uh, I don't know, it just sort of isn't quite enough. So we'll probably, given, given the level of wear on those knuckles, while bolstering would probably be okay. Um, you know, I'd like this piano to last another 80 years or more. So we'll probably replace those hammer flanges altogether, or, or uh, hammer shanks with the knuckles on. So, so here on the knuckles I have diameter, which, uh, and then we also, we also have uh, the the distance that the that those knuckles are placed, and the, um, so the size and the location. Hammers. Um, I'll probably again I'll have these hammers just duplicated, sending the the section ends. That's why that's why we just take out the section ends, and we can get those get those duplicated. But I I do have the bore distance with the rake, the bore angle. The tail length of both the or all four the base, the tenor, the mid tenor, and the treble sections. Dampers, we've got uh, we've got the monochord dampers, the ones that just kind of fit fit around the the one bass string. We've got the uh, the bicord that are like the wedges. That go in between the the two the two strings. Tricord, and then there's a flat. So there's four different types. So we want to measure uh, the quantity, and we want to measure the width and the length of all of those, just so we have all the notes. Let's see. <coughs> Hammer rest row, that, that again is more for uprights. Is extension like the depth of power? Can you check on mm -hmm. that? Time? It doesn't seem like that. Let me try a different outlet.
Pulling that action in and out even once is is like a ten minute. It's a destructive, you know. It's it's, it's a frustrating process. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do about that. So important. Yeah. Right. So the right lesson lesson learned. Yeah. Is that measurements are important, and and by the way, something something that I don't have on here is something that I learned from um, Christian Balduk. Um, did you take any of his classes at the last convention? Christian Balduk, he's got a French accent, he's Canadian French. Sounds familiar in my head. His his dad, Andre Balduk, is is a. Uh, Um, is a long time industry. He's, he's very well known in the industry. Um, build soundboards and that sort of thing. Anyway, something that I learned from Christian Bolduc is uh, is how to remove the pin lock on on Steinways and how to take plenty plenty of measurements. He and and actually what I what I like about his system, and we'll get into this, you know. In, in further web series as we get much further down the road on this. What I really like about his is, and, and I've done this on, on other pianos since then, actually quite a few pianos, when I remove the pin block, the location of the plate is so essential. When you, when you take the plate out, and it doesn't suffice to just use, uh, to take measurements, to use calipers, or you know, take write down measurements. But what he does is it's far more accurate is he uses wedges. He makes little wedges and puts them he, he draws he draws a line right here and right here where the beginning of the he numbers the wedge and <coughs> puts the wedge in, um, you know, taps it down a little bit and he draws a line oh, right the there on the wedge across, across the top. <laughs> and he'll put I know it's genius. Um, so since since I got that tip from him before before doing that, every piano that I had done, 
I'd done the measurements, taken taken measurements from this corner, from that corner, you know, everywhere. And it's just impossible to get the plate exactly back where it was. You take measurements based on the based on the bridge and you can get it close and you know there are all of these different dimensions that uh, that have to be just right and it's impossible to do it with, with just taking taking measurements. But with wedges, like there's only one place that 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 that, that wedge goes here. That plate <laughs> can be in order for the wedge to work. The wedges, there's several wedges. One here, one there. Um, yeah, kind of along along the back there. So uh, yeah, so you wait, number the wedges. So you which order they go in? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Right. Number the wedges, and then draw a map of of everything and double and triple check. And then here's another thing. On pin block height, so that panel that we were just talking about, it's an 1880s uh, Steinway. This is another beautiful Christian Bolduc tip. Um, what I used to do is I had a uh, I had a um, uh, jig of some sort that would that would measure the the string height, but that's and you're trying to take measurements and trying to duplicate it. So what he does is he gets a block of wood, just any scrap piece of wood, and he puts a screw in it and draws on the on the uh, key bed exactly where that um, block of wood goes. And he puts that block of wood in and then turns that screw up, pulls it out, turns it up a little bit, puts it back in a little bit higher until it's absolutely perfect. Okay. This is before taking the the strings and play out. So so then, and this is what I, I write on all of, on all of those blocks. Um, do not turn this screw. You know, <laughs> don't mess with because this. Because I'm just afraid that when I put it in the box that that corresponds to that particular piano, that a technician will get it and say, oh, there's a four inch screw. I need a four inch screw. Yeah, and we'll grab <laughs> it. Out. And then you know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> this screw is sacred. Don't touch it. <laughs> So, um, so we've got one at the one at either end <laughs> of exactly the, the height of the pin box. So I suspect that the uh, technician that rebuilt that Steinway probably just uh, made a miscalculation on on pin block height. That's that's my best guess. Such tight tolerances in that action as it's going in and out. It's oh, pretty yeah. scary. It's the engineering is really very precise, but. I don't know. Again, I've got to, I've got to look it over. But there's something going on. You're not supposed to drag, um, drop screws on. Get a belt sander in there and start grinding away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could, you could do that. I don't know. I'm not crazy about that idea either. Key that too. Maybe add it on there. So, I don't know. What's that? Maybe he added the thickness of the key bed or the action yeah yeah right yeah maybe maybe it's maybe it's with the action I'm, I'm just making the assumption because the pin block is replaced right I'm, I'm I haven't looked at it in since the spring I think so what, yeah. almost a year since I've since I've looked at it really carefully but uh, I'm, I'm another project <laughs> yeah that's another project <laughs> I'm 75% certain that it's an error with the pin block and not with the action, not with raising the action up too high. But I don't know. I'm not sure. So other than that, um, of course, there's track work. There's back action. There's a back action kit that uh, that you can you can purchase that uh, is completely um, what's the word? It's kind of a universal kit that, okay. that works really well. So we'll remove that whole back action and, and put in the new back action kit. I'm almost certain of that. I haven't looked at this one terribly closely. It actually, I mean, from, from looking at it right now, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. So who knows? Who knows what we'll do? Maybe we'll maybe we'll refurbish what's there, put put new felts and and repin the old back action. Who knows what we'll do? Um, and then, of course, as far as all of these screws, for some reason, I like 
screws that are nickel plated. Oh, nickel. Yeah, we'll use the original screws. We'll definitely use the original screws, and we'll make a we'll make a cardboard thing. We'll 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 make card big you know cardboard maybe about that big, and we'll draw out the plate with all the struts on it. Draw out all the struts, and we'll put you know in between, for example, this strut and this strut. We'll put all of these holes where we've got where we've got one, two, three in the middle, and one in that strut, one in that strut. We've got one in this little ashtray thing here, right? you know, in the middle above the above the serial number, and then you know, so we, so all of the screws are poked in that cardboard that we'll keep again. We'll keep that sacred until we put the put the um, plate back in. Um, I don't know. I just like the aesthetic of a beautifully painted plate with all of the screws nickel with nickel shiny chromey shiny right chromey looking heads. I like that. Um, and then all of these all of this lettering will have that will have that painted black. I like the aesthetic of that as well. I, yeah, I suspect you're right. It probably wasn't. And if this camera was rebuilt, was in fact indeed rebuilt, then they probably just neglected that detail. I, I just really think that's a classy detail. Um, what else? That's. That's where uh, the analysis begins. So I think, unless you have any questions or anything to add, anything <coughs> you can think of that, I'm, that I'm leaving out in, in the analysis. So, oh, casters. <laughs> Did you see those casters down there? They're awful. They're so ugly. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> tilt. Well, that too. Not only are they on tilt, but they're, someone replaced them who knows how long they go with with uh, casters that cosmetically are appropriate for an upright for an old upright piano. What uh, what we'll do for this piano is we'll buy some really classy looking big beefy casters. They're they they're pricey, um, and we'll get them if uh, can you get those in. I don't know if you can get those in nickel or not. And if, if not, we'll just have them replayed in nickel. I, I don't know. Something, something that just looks really nice. But of course, that's, that's all way down the road. In the meantime, we've just got to start taking measurements like crazy, tearing this thing down, and start putting on new felts, place orders. We've got lots of orders to place for hammers and strings and pins. Um, we'll start sending in all of the all of the hardware. We'll send in these, um, these pedals. Let me get this action back in so you, so you can see the pedals a little bit better. Don, do you have your light on you? Yeah. <coughs> Don always has his light on. Nice uh, little light. So this guy um, that does my replating for me, all of these little pop marks pock marks he'll he'll fill all of those in and uh when he replates it and uh and it'll be beautiful shiny you'll be able to see your reflection it'll it it almost looks like chrome when he's done we'll get this this plate here we'll get that replated um that'll look really nice yeah so uh yeah there you have it I don't know what else I'm missing. I'm sure I'm missing something. But uh, that's, the, <coughs> that's the plan for for Steinway A number 107209. <laughs> kind of a Steinway tradition to name your <coughs> channel by the serial number. And we'll have to figure out what we're going to do about a new music desk, re-engineer one, or just, just have it manufactured. Would you just get a 
picture of what it looked like originally, or does it matter? I think there are actually you you can get unfinished parts um, that are that are like uh, that that companies have on because people so commonly rebuild Steinways, and because this sort of thing, having a missing music desk is is not terribly uncommon, but there is a market for it, and it's not necessarily like a one-off thing, but uh, but you can get them just prefab unfinished and then and then we'll finish it uh, in polyester same with the a graphs the a graphs come in sets so you can order a set of Steinway a model a a graphs we'll just model A's <laughs> yeah that's what this is it's a model a it's a model a not a model T <laughs> I know that's what you're thinking there's no rumble seat, huh? no rumble seat in this one. No, this is a yeah. horse Steinway. The big one is the Model B, and then you've got a Model B, and then and then you've got a Model A, um, and then a uh, and then an L or an O, depending on the year and depending on the Hamburg or New York, and then uh, and then an M is the five foot seven, and then the S, I believe, is the next one, the, the little one. So Steinway models. Might be missing one. Anyway, and this one actually, Larry Fine, Larry Fine talks about this one. The Model A, the the word that Larry uses for, for the Model A is legendary. <laughs> the legendary Model A. So that's what we're that's what we're working on. Awesome. Okay, so web series. There we go. So so tune in every. Every Wednesday morning, again, it's 6 a.m. Um, 6 a.m. Mountain Time. If if this interests you, then then great. I mean that that was probably a taste. We'll probably get more technical. This this really was just just a just a visual analysis, essentially, and talking about what we're going to be doing. A lot of times, what what we do on our on our Wednesday training meetings is much more. Um, hands-on it's much more practical you know hey we need this pin block glued let's learn how to glue it or we need to regulate this spin it even we don't just work on Steinways we work on the lowly spin it as well um, so let's talk about replacing spin it elbows or let's talk about um, grand regulation or let's talk about key tops or let's talk about um, redoing the trap work altogether or you know, whatever, whatever it happens to be. So next week, I don't know. We'll see. Tune in and, and check it out. You'd be surprised. <laughs>